to our fresh episode and today as you can see the theme is rapid urbanization with rapid urbanization the infra has changed so have the requirements of the fleet operators changed today we have a vehicle that has also come of age the vehicle launched in 2005 tata ace is now out in its electric avatar and today it's all going to be about the electric chota hathi <laughs> So the vehicle, uh, from the time we start the vehicle, uh, if you, if you are moving from a diesel or a petrol vehicle, it can be almost like a cultural shock to you on uh, how to get used to and adapt to an EV. Uh, the fact that the vehicle is on uh, because of the lack of the ignition sound, that itself takes uh, getting used to. Then of course you are seeing this fancy rotary shift dial, which is a, uh, a league apart from the regular uh, transmission sticks. To get this to go in the right gear uh, has a certain process involved. So that needs a little getting used to. But once you get past that stage, you will appreciate the instant torque. You will appreciate the motors churning out about 27 uh, kilowatt of per hour of power at about 2000 RPM. The 130 Nm torque at about 2000 RPM. And the fact that the vehicle can lug along weight to accommodate the battery the company has uh, exercised a lot of weight saving options this also includes a load tray which is of aluminium uh, it's a 7 by 5 by 6 feet load tray which is of 203 uh, cubic feet uh, that has really uh, managed to uh, balance the weight of the battery as well as not compromise on the load bearing capability which is at around 650 odd kgs with the container uh, that you will see in the walk around towards the end of this video. Uh, so Tata has made those adjustments to ensure that total cost of ownership, the profitability of the operator has been kept at the forefront. The aggregates come really good together in order to justify the tag of modifying this legacy model. Now, anybody could have said that, uh, you know, why did Tata not choose to uh, upgrade the Intra to an electric version being a later platform? The logic was, first, because the Ace is a legacy model, total cost of ownership was the topmost priority and the parts commonality that the company has been able to achieve by modifying the Tata Ace to the EV guys uh, has come into play over here. So this vehicle on road uh, is about uh, a little over 11 lakhs for the top spec. When it was launched back in 22, it was around 10 lakhs. And that of course was excluding the government subsidies. So on road, you can expect to get this vehicle depending on the variant you choose at about 850 odd. Uh, the drivers who've been the erstwhile, erstwhile drivers of the Tata Ace, the regular models, have been quite attracted to this vehicle and for them perhaps the main concern has been on what if they have to replace the battery, what will be the cost of the battery but given the fact that Tata is giving them a six year warranty, uh, I think those fears have been very well allayed and uh, going forward with the trend of declining battery costs, we expect the cost to come down also. So all in all with the fleet management services and with the, the higher modern contemporary features integrated into the Chota Hathi. The electric Chota Hathi uh, looks quite promising. So, we have the, the Tata Ace EV standing right here. Uh, this vehicle spares the fleet operators with any superficial changes whatsoever. So, if you don't know it's an EV, it's your erstwhile Tata Ace the Chota Hathi. Now, what the company has done is they've taken advantage of a common architecture, 
which is uh, the CST, the Common Architecture Shared Technology. They have ensured parts carryover from the old Tata Ace, and that ensures that the company has been able to offer fleet operators a low total cost of ownership. So, if you look at the front fascia, it's still the same. You have the signature Tata grille, the badging, the Ace logo. So, if I, if I remove this, it's going to be very difficult to tell that it's an EV. But the moment this comes into picture, things change. So things change on the uh, the powertrain side, and that perhaps is most important to the fleet operator. The vehicle uh, sits pretty on 13-inch radials, but the good part is this vehicle comes with tire pressure monitoring system, so it is advanced on that front. So from the utility aspect, the vehicle is quite advanced. Uh, I can give you a sneak peek into the the driver cabin. It's a neat cabin, uh, you have a rotary shift dial, you have the instrument cluster, you have the blowers in place, although this unit doesn't have an aircon, you have the uh, steering wheel and this of course is lower in height compared to the older generation, the Tata uh, Ace HT for example, where the drivers, if, if the driver was short, the, the steering wheel uh, height almost uh, was above the, the eye level, so that was a, not an ergonomic position, this is quite ergonomic, the console is in the center, you have grab handles wherever required, premium upholstery and uh, the vehicle critical aggregates can be accessed from underneath the mat that you see. So these are certain inclusions, the driver safety, the driver ergonomics has been taken care of. Uh, things like the brake fluid can be accessed from the steering itself and uh, the wires and the, the fuses have been nicely packed with these kind of enclosures. You will not see uh, a clutch. But you will see a generously a generous surface of the brake pad and the accelerator, which is of utmost importance in this vehicle. Now, shifting focus from those aspects, from the the, the pedestrian and occupant uh, aspects, what the company has done is they've kept the fleet operator at the front and center, and this is where this portion of the vehicle, the low tray of the vehicle, comes into play to shave off the weight and to ensure that the battery pack weight is adjusted at the same time the company doesn't end up compromising on the load bearing capability. This structure is made up of aluminium. So the full container that you see is a 208 uh, cubic feet container that is a 7 by 5 by 6 feet that allows um, the operators to take about 650 kgs. If you look at this wheelbase which is about 2600 mm, you have disc brakes at the front, drum brakes at the rear and you have uh, leaf spring arrangements as your suspension parabolic and semi-elliptical. Uh, if you look at the rear of the vehicle, 160 mm of uh, ground clearance, it has about a 22% of gradability on offer, you have the spare wheel and a very very solid container which is, uh, which can be operated with this latch, so I just have to pull this lever up and I can happily open this huge container, there is Absolutely no dearth of storage space in the ACE EV. Very good. The job is done keeping in mind the different load body applications that this vehicle could be subjected to. It, it started out with something that was targeted at the e-commerce players. But today, even the single owner come drivers are tempted to look at this, whether they are into FMCG, whether they are into agro, whatever is their requirement, they can see it being fulfilled by the Tata ACE EV. Now, uh, with the vehicle ride, uh, as I was mentioning, the company has, uh, uh, you know, relied on the Tata Uni Everse that it calls. Uh, this means that group companies and external companies have been leveraged to the T to get this product on road. Now, you have synergies with companies like Tata Technologies. You have synergies with company like Tata, uh, uh, synergies with companies like LXC, which is for the connected part of the vehicle, and uh, the powertrain player like Electra. Uh, to get this, um, the IoT part of the vehicle going. So, all of these synergies have ensured that it's a good on-road package where Tata is now establishing itself as a transport solution provider even on the e-cargo mobility uh, perspective. So, they, they have given certain industry best where uh, things like 50% more than uh, the range on offer from the three-wheelers makes it a best-in-class vehicle. Consumption of about 7.6 kilowatt, uh, 6, 7.6 kilometers on a single kilowatt hour of the battery consumption. So things like these have made a lot of difference and uh, the vehicle is being lapped up by operators. So 
in 2022 itself when the vehicle was first shown the order book was uh, uh, populated by 39000 orders that the company is still fulfilling and it is ensuring that it also attracts single owner come uh, uh, drivers to expand the universe of the tata ace ev so thank you for staying tuned on road check with cv hope you enjoyed this drive we will come back soon with yet another vehicle on board